Hello there friends and welcome for today's Pathfinder Enhanced Guide we have an update on my previous Kinetesis guide. Back then I promised I would cover different mythic paths for the Kinetesis so you wouldn't just get stuck with Demon and this is what we'll be doing now. We have many different options for your Kinetesis mythic path. From Lich with its unique Lich powers that have direct synergy with the Kinetesis class and abilities together with a full separate spell book, plus the Aeon Path and its very unique ability to let even your allies withstand your deadly area of effect abilities. And lastly we'll be going with both the classic Trickster for the ultimate critical range and damage possible on your Kinetic Cyst Blasts and abilities, with a follow-up as a Legend as well, so you retain the best from Trickster with the best from the Legend Path, such as an increased number of attacks per round, and higher damage too, together with other nice power-ups from the extra 20 levels. So without further ado, let us get into our Mythic Kineticist guide. Now if you are looking for a guide on how to actually play your Kineticist, please remember that my previous Kineticist guide has everything you could want, including how all of the mechanics work. The same for the complete normal build progression from level 1 to level 20. Please be sure to check that out this time, it's mostly for the different Mythic paths. First, let us cover the Lich Kineticist. The main advantages of the Lich path over others are First, you actually have two powers that directly enhance your Kineticist. Negative Energy Mastery, which can add 1d6 points of negative energy damage plus 1 per Mythic rank to your Kineticist Blast. Note that it says Blasts, meaning it only works for the Blast and also your Kineticist Blade. It will not work for area of effect abilities like, let's say, Deadly Earth or Wall. Lastly, it will also, without a save, inflict a negative level upon the target. This can be quite handy, especially when it comes to your Kinetic Blade, because every single strike with your Kinetic Blade, when you have this power, will drain the enemy of one level, and it stacks. Negative levels are some of the strongest debuffs in this game. Second, we have Death Rush. Whenever you charge or use a combat maneuver and... Kinetics can easily perform two of them through pushing infusion for bow rush and most importantly bowling infusion for trip. You'll get to deal an additional 1d6 points of damage per mythic rank. This one will work on your deadly earth for even higher area of effect damage. Liches can of course also increase both their attack rolls and damage even further through some other powers like fear control and of course it will provide a full scaling spell book with many powerful mythic spells, including the highly useful Vampiric Blade buff, together with Eyes of the Bulldog for even more level drain without a save, and of course an extreme amount of temporary hit points through spells like False Grace and so on. So in the end, while Lich won't have as high area of effect damage as Demon, it has other tools to make up for that. And don't forget that unlike Demon Rage, the Lich powers are all passive, so are always in effect. Something annoying about a Kinetics Lich is that eventually, at Mythic level 9, once you fully transform into a Lich, you'll lose your constitution score. Quite troublesome because most Kineticists are focused into constitution for a lot of their class abilities and powers. You have two ways of overcoming this late game. The first is going with Overwhelming Soul, which is the Kineticist based on Charisma instead of Constitution. I wouldn't really recommend it though because it has a very annoying penalty of not being able to accept Burn, which for a Kineticist is a massive downgrade. My preferred choice is Psychokineticist, which is a kineticist based on Wisdom instead of Constitution. While Wisdom doesn't have direct synergy with the Lich's hit points, once again it's only super late game anyways, you can still accept Burn, so to me it's way better. And of course you don't have to play almost the entire game as an Overwhelming Soul or a Psycho Kineticist, you can just start as a normal Kineticist, so Constitution based, and later, well, before fully becoming a Lich at Mythic 9, just respect your character into one of these. It's up to you. Now when it comes to being a Lich Kineticist, at Mythic 3 you'll get your separate spellbook as Kineticists cannot merge with the Lich path. Still you'll have a lot of useful spells, many of which can be applied to your Kinetic Blade or your character for higher bonuses. As always I like going for the Skeletal Marksman because it is a ranged ally so you won't have to bother healing him much because it won't really be getting hit. Now when it comes to your first Lich power, 
you can already go with death rush because at this point well you already have bowling fusion to proc trip which is a combat maneuver or you can also go for negative energy mastery for the nice bonus to damage and also the negative level just remember that negative energy mastery will not affect deadly earth and walls so if you don't care for the normal blast and blade just pick death rush earlier for mythic level 6 this is when i would go for death rush or just pick mastery if you didn't get it before for the lich power at mythic 9 fear control is the way to go it doesn't really have direct synergy with kinetic blast like death rush and negative energy mastery but it still provides an amazing increase to attack rolls and also to damage so overall it's the best pick we have left this will increase the power of your kinetic blade Alright, now let us cover the Aeon Kineticist. Your main advantage comes from the Enforcing Gaze Area Effects ability, because this will let your allies become immune to your friendly fire effects, which essentially means you can drop that extremely powerful and dangerous Deadly Earth right on the middle of your party members, and they'll be able to keep on fighting just fine. My way. Be careful, because once battle ends, your gaze effect will also disappear. So, remember to cast this miss infusion or just move your allies out of it. Because battle doesn't immediately end, you don't necessarily have to rush your allies as fast as you can out of your deadly earth. Don't forget, you can and should still ambush enemies with your powerful kineticist abilities. Then once battle starts, turn the area of effect gaze on and your allies will be free to move even for the Deadly Earth you cast before battle. And of course, Aeon can also provide other bonuses to attack rolls, like the Attack Gaze, the Bane ability which only becomes stronger, and what's even one of the ultimate dispelling abilities in the game, which will apply to your Kinetic Blade. So while the Aeon doesn't really directly get any damage bonus to your Kinetic's abilities, because your party members are free to attack while inside them, well, their damage will more than make up for what you don't get. Now let's get into our Kineticist Aeon Mythic progression. Now you can't really get the Friendly Fire Immunity Gaze right at Mythic 3, only at 5+. In any case, attack is extremely versatile and the reality is any character in this game wants more attack bonus. Plus it will even debuff the enemy's attack rolls too, so works as a way of increasing your tankiness and defenses. As Kineticist cannot cast spells, be sure to fill your Aeon Mythic spellbook with self buffs like Divine Favor and True Strike. For the second gaze, Attacks of Opportunity, it doesn't really enhance your own Aeon because your Kinetic Blade cannot proc Attacks of Opportunity, but it is still absolutely amazing for your party members. Do note that you can only get two Aeon Gazes on at the same time, starting at Mythic level 6. Now, at last, we can finally pick our Friendly Fire Immunity Gaze. It will come a bit later than when you could get Deadly Earth. Usually you get Deadly Earth at the level you would be when you get Mythic rank 4. But I suppose if you rush Chapter 3 for Mythic 5, you can get it just in time. Here we are, Enforcing Gaze Area Effects. So at this point, I would just keep this on until Mythic 6 when you can apply a second gaze together. For another gaze, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Because at this point, with two gazes on at the same time, you'll just be using attack and area effects. Although you can also go for attacks of opportunity and area effects. Don't forget to pick the echolocation spell at Mythic 6 as a level 4 Aeon spell. And honestly, any other gazes now. Just pick whatever you want. You might as well pick Temporal Jump now, because amusingly enough, you can only pick this gaze starting from Mythic 8. Now let us cover the Kineticist Trickster, also another one of my favorites. Its main advantage is, just like with any Trickster, way higher critical range than other characters, including for your Kineticist Blast and Blade. We have 13 to 20, except we even critical whenever you roll a 1, which is an automatic failure by default. The other kineticist can only get 17 to 20, so essentially we have slightly higher than double the critical chance of other kineticists. And when you consider how absolutely absurd our critical damage is, well, the more criticals you are getting the better. By remaining a full trickster instead of going legend, 
you can even get access to the Trick Fate spell, which destroys everything because you'll get 100% critical chance. Together with other nice powers like the Athletics 3 Trick, which lets you scale your base attack bonus from 15 to 20, just as if you were a high base attack bonus class like a fighter, resulting in higher damage and also another attack per round with your blade. To put it simply, if you want the highest single damage possible, then the Trickster Kineticis is definitely the way to go. Abilities like Deadly Earth, because they don't require a roll to hit, well, they cannot critical too, although it doesn't really matter because you're still dealing close to 400 damage anyways with your Deadly Earths. The Trickster Kineticis is the first one that, well, actually has some slight differences when it comes to the normal build progression, because of course, we have to make up space for the special Trickster feats. You can only get them at level 13, because Kineticis can only get the normal one at level 11. So before leveling to 13 as always, remember to get Perception 1 and 2 at Mythic 4. Then it's pretty simple, just get all the Trickster feats at 13, 15, and lastly, 17. At 19, you might as well consider picking the completely normal spell, Meta Magic Feat. So you can then get even more castings of Trick Fate, and also some extra spellbook flexibility. Now, when it comes to your Kineticis Trickster Mythic progression, at Mythic 3, just get Arcana 1 as usual to enhance the power of gear you find, together with Perception 1 and 2, at Mythic 4, of course, to qualify for our special feats. For your trick at Mythic level 5, Athletics rank 1. It's in your best interest to focus into the Athletics tricks now, because the third one will let you acquire 5 extra points of base attack bonus. For Mythic 6, Knowledge World 1, and then Athletics rank 2. For Mythic 7, you can go with either Lore Nature 1 or Religion 1, depending on if you want, well, the free food bonuses from Nature 1 or later the domain powers from Lore Religion 2. Then Athletics 3 is the must-have as I explained before. For Mythic 8, Lore Nature 1 or Religion 1. Then Knowledge World Rank 2, which will increase your critical chance even further. For Mythic 9, you can pick any trick here, including Infuse Magic Device since we have UMD anyways. Then choose between either Reuse Magic Device or Lore Religion Rank 2 for the domain powers. Animal is always a choice, because well, you'll get a pet, even if it's super late game, it's still a pet. But my preferred pick here is Law. While Law won't directly let you achieve 100% critical chance, because you only critical on 13 to 20, not 11, it can still be quite powerful to help your allies critical, especially ones with high critical range weapons like Amelia with Rapiers or Scylla with Scimitars. The secondary property of adding Axiomatic to your Kinetic Blade is also quite handy to have for extra damage against demons. Besides that, I would also pick Luck. Luck is quite handy to have, both of the abilities here are very useful, especially Divine Fortune, which lets you roll a d20 again and pick the best result, thus highly increasing the chances of you getting critical hits too. The domain spell list is also quite solid, I mean, you even get mass heal for free. As far as Mythic 10, at this point you can pick anything you want including Knowledge World Rank 3, so that your allies can qualify for any feat without the prerequisites, but this is best used when respecting them. Use Magic Device 3 too, so you can get a full wizard spellbook. Considering I did go with 12 intelligence at character creation for all of my kineticists, you'll have enough intelligence to cast your spells, especially buffs. Now let us talk about the kineticist legend. Its main power over other kineticists is the fact you have the highest amount of attacks per round possible. 3, 6, 7, 8 kinetic blade hits, because yes, your kinetic blade can hit for a number of times, well, equal to how many attacks per round you have, unlike the blast, which is limited to just one. The damage is way higher than listed here. On a normal hit, you can go for close to 500 damage. Meanwhile, on a critical hit, it's 1,800 damage. Doesn't get any better than that, right? Plus, remember, if you want to maximize the number of your kinetic blade hits per round, you can't really afford to use gather power, because it will prevent you from making full attacks. Of course, you can always ambush the enemy with it first. Having a lot of extra attacks also matters because the burn cost from your kinetic blade, we have three here without gather power, is only applied once per round. So the more attacks you have, the more you'll get to benefit without having to spend burn again. Now let us get into our Kinetic Legend build. 
For the normal progression, it is exactly almost the same as the trickster, right? We go for the special trickster feats until level 17, except, well, if you want to pick mythic power attack early, without respecting your character, then you can get power attack, the normal one, right at level 5 or 7. Just delay weapon focus kinetic blast and outflank for after level 20, so during the legend progression, especially if you went with human. The other feats, though, are all very important. Alright, now let's get into the remaining 20 whole levels for our Kineticist Legend. You probably already know what my preferred choice is, but yep, it is Fighter and Mutation Warrior. We get the Mutagen, which is absolutely amazing for a Kineticist because it can increase constitution, all your physical scores eventually. Together with high base attack bonus progression, it's just that as far as your weapon training abilities, sadly, it doesn't seem like any of the weapon groups listed here actually work with your Kinetic Blast or Blade. On the other hand, Weapon Mastery can work for Kinetic Blade. For level 21, we might as well get now into the Shattered Defenses package as usual. If you didn't pick Weapon Focus before, pick it now first, otherwise, Dazzling Display. As a bonus feat, might as well already go for Shattered Defenses. For level 22, launch, because I didn't really had the space for it before, at least as far as this build because of all the trickster special feats. The extra reach can help a lot with your kinetic blade attacks. For 23, toughness. Then at 24, weapon specialization, kinetic blast. As far as 25, well, tendon trip can be quite useful if you have some of the tripping pads that can also pick this feat. For the weapon training, as I said before, I don't think any of these actually works with your Kinetic Blast or Blade, so pick anything you want. You might as well go with natural weapons, because at the very least your Mutagen will give you a bite attack. Or any other weapon group you want, like Heavy Blades, which is the most versatile of them all, if you want to use weapons other than your Kinetic Blade. For 26, man, at this point we kinda already ran out of the best fits you pick with Kineticus, because the reality is... A lot of stuff here doesn't really work with your Kinetic Blade or Blasts. I suppose you could go for extra versatility now, since we have weapon training into heavy blades, as to well get specialized into another weapon type, it's just not much of a reason to do so. Anyways, I'll pick the cleave line now, just because we can, even though I'm pretty sure it does not work with Kinetic Blade, but at least you can use it with another weapon, as I said. For 27, cleaving finish, then Pharaoh Mutagen. For 28, Great Cleave. For 29, improved cleaving finish at last. And then train initiative. For level 30, greater weapon focus kinetic blast. Then at 31, accomplished sneak attacker, together with feral wings. For 32, greater weapon specialization kinetic blast. 33, shake it off. Just so we can now pick fighter static, so even if no one else has shake it off, it will still proc for us. For 34, Hammer the gap, it's not really that needed, but we have the fist to spare at this point. For 35, Precise Strike, once again because we have the Fighter Statics ability. And then the Greater Mutagen. For 36, honestly at this point you can really pick anything you want, because we already have everything possible. I guess you could go with Blind Fight, but we already have Tremor Sense as a nerf kineticist. There's always improved critical into Bite, because we have one Bite attack from the Pharaoh Mutagen ability. And well, like I said, from 37 on Mars, just pick anything you want. It won't really make that much of a difference now. Including other skill focus, or safe boosting feats like Iron Wheel and Lightning Reflexes. Together with Armed Bravery here, for higher wheel saving throws. For 38, Advanced Weapon Training, Fighter's Reflexes to increase your Reflex saving throws. As for 39, anything you want, together with the Grand Mutagen at last. For 40, thankfully we can pick Weapon Mastery into Kinetic Blast for even higher critical damage. Alright, now let us cover Mythic Progression for our Trickster into Legend. Honestly, the first Mythic ability is still the same regardless of your Kinetic's Mythic Path. You absolutely want Kinetic Overcharge, it's just the best overall. For Mythic Rank 2, you have a few different options. As a Legend, you can actually add a lot of extra damage from Power Attack to your Kinetic Blade hits. So Mythic Power Attack is a good choice here. If you don't want to respect before becoming a Legend, you'll have to qualify for this early, right at Mythic 2. Well, there's always extra Mythic. Over Infuse Blast, I don't think it's that necessary for this character. Usually just... The bowling infusion is enough, 
and we don't have the aspect of Kalavagus cheese from Demon, so that we can get multiple attacks from as many combat maneuvers possible. Just keep it for either Last Stand, which is the ultimate tanking ability, just in case, or Master Shape Shifter, which will eventually provide you with a plus 4 stacking bonus to all your physical scores, including Constitution, which helps Kineticist a lot. Always a chance can work too if you don't want to fail on one rolls with your Kinetic Blade hits. I still prefer Mythic Power Attack. Well, alright, so this was it for my Mythic Kineticist guide, with all the other fun Mythic Path options besides just Demon. If you found this guide useful, please remember to like, subscribe and also consider becoming a channel member, your support is always highly appreciated. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends!